All characters being unlocked for free, earning the premium currency in the battle pass, having an option to unlock old mythic skins and a bunch of new things on top of that. Still doesn't feel real because I'm talking about Overwatch 2. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of giving false hope to the players by big companies with fat stacks of money. A few days ago the official YouTube channel of Overwatch has rolled out with a community post with what is in my opinion the most important update for the Overwatch 2 title so far. Shortly after the first developer update of 2024 featuring Aaron Keller, the guy who was responsible for telling the players Overwatch 2 was cancelled and will only be getting Overwatch 0.9, yes that guy, finally getting some nicer messages on his script to read for the players, so they won't be stalking him in his sleep this month. In this video I will explain everything mentioned in those posts and tell you why those things are the most important pieces of information the player base has ever seen. So let's get started. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room, that is the fact all heroes in Overwatch 2 will no longer be locked behind anything. No paywall, no challenge wall, no battle pass diff, nothing. You could say that it's a step back to the original Overwatch 1 days and... Wait, wait, wait a moment, is Overwatch 2 just slowly reverting to Overwatch 1? What was the reason behind Overwatch 2 in the first place if it all comes back to Overwatch 1? What if Bobby Kotick is still running the company from behind the scenes and the breast milk is still being stolen? If you're new to Overwatch or just don't bother trying to play it optimally, counterpicking is one of the fundamental roles where it comes to winning your matches. Some people like this mechanic, but others aren't so stupid. Basically, certain heroes are more vulnerable or get easily outperformed by their counters, and Overwatch allows their players to switch their characters at any point of the match. Now, imagine if you're a new player and the enemies are running an anti-heal heavy comp, and the perfect solution for half of their team would be this abomination. But, oh no! It's Looks like you didn't complete the battle pass back in season whatever, and now you are at a significant disadvantage because the game said no. This will no longer be the case, and just like that Overwatch becomes a much more interesting game for a freshly installed players, who have the whole roster to go ahead and experiment with, and those who already sunk a couple of good hours into it have access to the entire roster, giving them no excuse if their team will need a vital change. While on the topic of heroes, there's the new mole person coming into the game Venture, and if you want to know everything in detail about this hero, then go ahead and watch this video later, or you can go to it right now by clicking the thing in the top right corner, but in short, a very unique design, interesting trope expanding the LGBTQ clan, and from what I can tell in the graphics they prepared for this little season 10 tease, the in-game model for Venture looks done. And is it just me, or does it look like the dude from Dune? Finishing up the gameplay section, there are also some new maps coming in which isn't as exciting as the completely new game mode. The very first time we got a new game mode we ended up with push which is <clears throat> which is um, not okay, but then Blizzard realized players like good game modes, so they clapped it back with Flashpoint, and wow, would you look at that, I too made a video about that. Well, if you're interested in the topics I am covering, why not subscribe, because I am sure I will be covering the brand new toy coming soon, that is the Clash. From what it looks like, it might be the 5 CP game mode similar to TF2, where there are 5 points on the map, and starting from the neutral point in the middle, both teams are fighting to push onward and get to the end. But I also noticed this little progression bar above the points, so it might be Blizzard's solution to the never-ending matches that are present in the class-based shooter. In TF2 you could spend up to a decade fighting for the middle point back and forth with the enemy team, adding time infinitely, but from what it looks like in the Overwatch teaser image, it's the first team to cap 5 times to win. So even if the entire match will be stuck in the middle of the map, this system is prepared to let the team who capped 5 times first win and therefore end the suffering. Personally, I'm really excited about this one, because opposite of push, there is no annoying robot you have to follow around the map, but instead the control points act as a little indicator to the players where the fight should be taking place. The only factor I am afraid of is the big amount of back capping that might be possible with heroes like Sombra or even Tracer, who will constantly disorganize your team and make the game mode feel more like a rat race than an actual fun experience. So that is all for the gameplay changes, and we'll honestly just have to wait and see how everything includes including the new hero will play out, especially with the new health changes that happened a moment ago, time will tell if Overwatch is still worthy my precious disk space, but now let's talk about the most important thing for Blizzard regarding Overwatch 2, 
that are the skins. Once again, Aaron Keller and the little post have stated that players starting from season 10 will have the opportunity to unlock the old mythic skins. On paper, it sounds like a great idea, I'll just give the players more freedom and grant those late llamas a chance to get those sweet mythics too. But what they did not mention is the price. I hardly doubt they will just put it in the shop to buy it like any ordinary skin. It's just too simple for this rarity of skins and of course it's not going to be given away for free just for completing some silly challenges. So I suspect they will combine both of those in one tight package. Think of it as a tiny battle pass but you only get one skin for completing it. This way Blizzard will not only get money from you, again, but they will also lock you into playing the game even more just like a normal battle pass would. And just like any shop offer, I will not judge anyone how they spend their money, but holy moly, if you are buying anything for real money in Overwatch, you must really have some issues. One of the reasons why is that you can already earn the premium currency simply by grinding out the weekly challenges. And if you don't want to do that, then season 10 is once again giving the players a small helping hand. But in this case, the hand only wants to make more money and only looks like it's helping, but in reality it makes your addiction worse and worse. But yeah, sure, it's a helping hand. Under the mythic skins changes, there is also an information about the coins appearing in the battle pass from now on. I'm not sure if that's a scam and they are talking about the grey currency or are they really the premium currency coins, but if they are, then we have officially entered the Fortnite levels of battle pass design, where by completing the whole pass and saving some coins from the weekly challenges, you will have access to the next battle pass that will be ready for the next season. It's a very smart way to keep the players invested in the game throughout its whole life cycle, you don't want to miss out any future cool skins and the how wonderful weapon danglers, do you? By teasing those coins in front of the players' faces, they are encouraged to push the battle pass as far as they can, as they can earn this premium currency only accessible through grinding or spending real life money. The only question I have for this change is, are these golden coins going to be locked behind the premium path of the pass, or will they be available for both free to play and mommy credit card Yoinker players. So in summary, season 10 really looks like it's a giant middle finger to Bobby. A ton of quality of life changes and a lot of patting the players on their heads. Overwatch 2 was already one of the best free to play titles you could get in 2023 and with all of those changes coming next season, the game really does feel like it's getting back on its legs and allowing the players to enjoy it to the fullest either by giving the freedom of hero choice or allowing the purchases of previously premium items exclusive to the old battle pass. Most people are happy about the changes, but it doesn't stop them from questioning why were the changes made in the first place, as no one in the world would support locking some part of the content that was previously accessible to them for the sole reason of we need more money and we ran out of weapon dangler ideas. There are people who are still disappointed with the health pool changes and how it ruined some characters and made others completely redundant, but there are also people who are very happy with the one shots being mostly gone from the game and honestly season 10 looks like it's finally an update that will satisfy all players. But they also announced that they will fully stop working on PvE missions, so I'm glad we're still dealing with the classic Blizzard Entertainment at the end of the day. More Overwatch rants, um, I mean update videos in the future, so tune in next time where I will be talking about Overwatch's identity crisis. But for now, thanks for watching, have a lovely day, bye bye.